Um, in this video, uh, we're going to continue to discuss um, the mean time spent in uh, transient states. First, let's recall uh, we define a quantity f of i um, earlier um, in previous lectures. That is, um, this is a probability of um, this markup chain ever returns uh, to state i starting from state i. Keep in mind, uh, we have to leave and then come back. This is not a uh, probability of x0 is i given x0 is i. And after we uh, learned the sij, we can similarly define fij. And fij is the probability of this markup chain ever visit uh, state j given um, starting from state i. All right. And this special case is uh, so especially um, fi is fi i. Okay. And we would like to use the equation uh, we just derived to derive um, a formula for um, fij. And uh, what we would like to do is uh, we compute sij by the following conditioning. By conditioning on this uh, Markov chain ever visits J from I or never visits J from I. All right, these are two uh, mutually uh, exclusive events. Uh, one is ever, and the other one is never. And now let's write down um, using a conditional probability formula. I'm sorry, conditional expectation formula. And SIJ. And uh, SIJ is uh, the mean time uh, spent in J when we start in I. And if we condition on um, we ever been to J, then this becomes this is the time j condition on uh, we start from i and we ever transits or say ever visits uh, state j uh, start from i times of probability of, of this ever uh, visit visit j start from i and then plus the other one is uh, we condition on never visits J and we start from I and this is a probability of never visit J we start from I and by definition first of all by definition um, this one is this ever visit probability 
is nothing but uh, f i j. And similarly, because uh, they are mutually exclusive, and it's either um, this one or uh, the blue line. So this is 1 minus uh, f i j. All right. And now let's look at the expectation. The first term is nothing but um, delta i j. And the second term is less obvious, um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to first write down this uh, term here, which is s j j, is because the memoryless property of Markov chain, we don't care whether um, it starts from I or not, as long as this Markov chain ever visits J and the uh, uh, we can start our clock at the time period where this uh, uh, Markov chain ever visit this J. I'm sorry, time step. Uh, so this is time J and the start from J. All right. And then next is uh, we simply plus 1 minus Fij times. And if we look at this probability right here, that is a time in J, but uh, condition on we never visit J starting from I. And uh, um, the only possible chance is when I is J, we, uh, we have visited uh, J once. Otherwise, uh, we never visit J. If we simplify, uh, this is nothing but uh, delta I J plus, because uh, uh, there are terms of F I J times delta I J got canceled, and so this is uh, delta I J plus F I J times S J J. And uh, which leads us to the formula. If we solve for f i j, f i j is uh, s i j subtract delta i j divided by s j j. All right. And now let's uh, uh, let's look at the example of a gambler's room in the textbook. And uh, we suppose uh, the gambler has a 40% of chance of uh, winning uh, one round. And uh, he'll break the bank when his fortune reaches seven. Uh, also, uh, we start with three units of money. And the question number one is, uh, asking us to find the expected number of time periods expected amount of time uh, this gambler has uh, five units of money. And the second question is, uh, what is uh, the probability of this gambler's fortune ever reach uh, one unit of money?
All right. And um, the solution is pretty straightforward using uh, what we've learned just now. Uh, first, let's write down the state space. The state space is 0, 1, 2, etc., until to 7. And the two end states are recurrent, are absorbing states. And the transient states contain 1, 2, till 6. And uh, furthermore, we can write down the probability transition matrix only for the transient states. And uh, it is, if we're at state 1, we have 0% of chance it's either uh, winning or losing, so um, could, if this gambler wins, uh, it's, his fortune becomes 2, and we have 40% of chance, and we have 0, 0, 0, 0. And similarly, we have uh, 0 0.6 and 0 0.4. This is 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0, 0. This is 0, 0. And the last row is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, 0 0.6, 0. We simply notice uh, uh, we have two rows right here. The row sum is not 1. Uh, but this is like a sub matrix because we can rearrange Uh, the states so that uh, this is uh, a, a block of the original uh, transition probability matrix. And now if we want to, um, for Q1, we're essentially, we're asking what is S35. So now uh, we compute this one and uh, here, I'll give you guys the answer, a uh, copy from the textbook, and this implies S35 is 0.9228. And uh, this, is, this is not a probability, this is just uh, the, the mean time, all right? Q2, and let's say uh, Q2. Um, if the question to ask is uh, what is the probability of this gambler's fortune ever reach one unit of money? And this is uh, computing F31. And by the formula, this is uh, S31 subtract uh, delta 31, which is zero, divided by S11. And uh, if we compute this, um, First of all, the delta 31 is 0, so this is nothing but S31 divided by S11, and if we uh, compute this, this is approximately 0 0.88. So we have a pretty decent chance of uh, from 3 uh, to 1.